Hello and welcome back to uh, the uh, Old Tricks Weekly Challenge. This challenge is number 17 and it's a little bit more tricky and it includes a macro which I'm still not quite um, got to grips with. So here we go. We're, and th um, this one specifically wants one, so we'll have to work it out. Um, okay, so this is where we are looking at a bank uh, and we're trying to calculate the retention rate over month over month. So the numerator, i.e., the I guess that's the the number of accounts, is the, uh, is in the calculation are all the accounts open 24 months prior to the start of the month. For example, for June 2013, the numerator will be the total number of accounts between 1st of June and the oh, 2011, and the 31st of May 2013. The denominator will be the total number of accounts closed, so that's the ones that we're taking you know, off, I guess, to work out the retention rate. Now, if we look in, well, it's not really the, re is that really the retention rate? Because if you look in the results here, in the output, I guess it's the, not, it's, it's the loss rate, it's the non-retention rate, um, because it's what we're losing. So each, so in the first, first month, we're losing 50%. What we have is 10, 10 records. Now, what we need to do is create a batch macro that calculates the retention rate for May, June, July, August, in, basically in this format. So, uh, so we've got the closures, not all the accounts close, um, but we have, interestingly, we do have May, June, July, August in this data set. Okay, well, let's have a look what these um, fields are because uh, we want to check that they're actually dates. They look like dates. Um, so if we run it and then go into the browse tool here, we can see that in the metadata here it says string. So, um, yeah, not dates. So we need to convert them to dates. So let's bring in um, the date time tool. Start with the open one and the Date format is month, day, then year. Just click on there. Month, day, then year. Yep. So that will bring that one in, um, and then we copy that, and then do the same again. But we can do it with the closed date, and we'll call it closed. Closed date. Okay. So then we can. I think we just bring in a. Date, so let's um, get rid of the original string ones, we don't need them anymore, and we run. Okay, so what that gives us is nulls for the close. What's wrong with that? Oh, I didn't actually select the. Uh, let's run that again. That gives us the actual dates now. Now we're in actual date format. Okay, so now what we need to do is run this through for May, June, July, and August to work out like you know 24 months prior to these dates um prior to this whatever this date is so if we bring in a text input initially um, and we can put it in as 2013 dash what is it may 05 dash 01 okay so that'll give us one to start with what i'm thinking is that this is going to run as a as a batch so we'll have to well let's run it through with one and what it does is it's kind of an iterative well not an iterative batch job basically and it will run each one um for each row so let's then append this so we can bring this date into our data set as an additional field we might want to rename it actually let's name it in here month Okay, so then we've now we know what month we're dealing with. Um, so in here we'll have them all there. So we run this. That then adds that month to the end of end of each of these. So now the first thing we need to do is work out the what what is the date 24 months before this month date. Okay, so uh, for that we use a formula tool. Okay, and um, we can create a new field, we'll call it month uh, period 
uh, start, something like that. Basically, there's a load of date time uh, formulas in here. And for this one, I think it's, it's the date time add. So um, if we bring in the month as the field that we're, and then this is the, what you want to add. So in units um, or digits, so it's two, but two um, years, but it's, we want to, um, we have to put them in, yeah, uh, but it, that's, see, that's come up as 2015. So I think we want minus two. Let's say that's 2011 now. Um, now let's make that an actual date. Sorry, there you are. We just run that. See, we now have a date which is two years prior, which was, so from here the example was first of, oh, for June, it was the first of June, but we're starting in May, so it'll be the first of May. Um, <clears throat> so then we need to create the, until the 31st, the day before the month, so we need a month period end. So let's just copy that and paste it. Um, and we'll just create a month. We'll just add it and call it month period. Oh, I could spell um, end. And we just want it to be month minus one. Okay, so that's the day before, I oh know, minus one, it's the day after. There you go. So now we have 30th of April. Again, we want this to be a date. And yep, so there we go. So that's our period. <coughs> so now we need to know, we want to know if the um, open date, the, this, this open date is in this period. So let's, um, Let's bring in another formula. I think you could probably do this all in one formula, um, just adding in additional ones, but I'll do it separately because I, it makes it clearer for me. Uh, so we want to do, we want to call it an open count. And then we'll do, uh, we uh, do conditional if statement. And then we'll do if, what we call it, open. Open is uh, greater greater than month start period and in open is uh, less than month end period then one else zero if we make that a integer so that work let's see what we get okay so we now have a count here so we've got one two and then the rest seem to be after outside of that date and if we look at the results, we actually have two open. So this is given us for the May one, the two that we want. Okay, so that's that's good. Okay, so now let's work out when they closed. So if we bring in a, a formula and add in a column called um, close count. And for that, we want to do um, uh, oh, I think we need to create, oh, hold on, we want to do it for the next month. So, uh, actually, let's create the month end as well. Month end period. Um, and that would be uh, date, time, add. Um, and you want to take the month and we want to add one. It's until the end of the month. month hmm. so that puts it to the end the beginning of 
June, but we actually want the day before that. So I'm wondering if we do date here, and then what we do is we'll add another one, and we'll call it the same, where is it, month end period, and we'll do date. Now what I'm thinking will happen here, month end period, um, we want to do minus one and days. I think that will then give us the 31st of May. Brilliant. Okay, so that gives us our month to work on. Okay, so now we need to work out if it is in that month. So that's where we need to bring in uh, that. So we want to do, what did we say? We're going to call it closed month. Um, and we have uh, another if statement. Let's do, so it's, if the close is greater than the, uh, what do we want, month, yeah, because it's the, the, we put the start of the month, um, and uh, close is uh, less than, uh, or did we say month end period? Month end period, then uh, one else zero. <coughs> if we make that a integer, okay, so let's just run that and see what we get. So in here we now have the one closed and the two open, um, which matches the one closed and the two open in here. Okay. So now let's, um, if we summarize it by month, here, we summarize these counts, we'll get the, uh, get the result. So let's just summarize. So open count uh, sum, and then what's it called in here? It's called, just called open. Okay, so we can then call it open. And then call that close. I'm going to rename it. Uh, group by the month is like that. And what do they call it in here? I think they just called it start of month. Okay, so we can rename that start of month. Okay. Okay, so we run that. And we've got the two, one, and the date. So now well, we just need to work out the calculation. Uh, for for that, so preparation. We need another formula, and we simply select percentage, which I think is what it was called, and it simply close nope, close uh, divided by uh, open. Oh, can't type today. Here, open. And we want that as a double, and that's our 0.5. So we run that. And we've just got that in the right place. It's just, we can use a select to just put it in the right order. Run, and we have the first row. Okay, so now, now what we need to do is make that a, uh, a batch. Oh, we, let's bring it. Let's do bring in all of the rows here. So what I was thinking of doing, we can either type in these, or we could probably generate this from here. Well, let's maybe look at it a different way. So let's um, let's bring in the date time. Maybe we want to convert the string. Let's convert it to time. So what if we want to? Let's, let's bring another one in. Let's convert it back the other way. So if we, from date to string and then back again. So if we look at close, and we want to call it start of month. And we want to uh, select the format of the new column. So we just want month and year. Is that all right? 
we don't want the day on there let's go with that one okay so let's let's run that let's just move this out of the way and what we can do here is um, actually just get rid of this and then do another one which converts it back again to a date so it's date to string we want start of month it's got the format of month and year and we should let's see what happens then cool it's given us the first of the month of each of these see that okay so let's just then clean that up um, so what we want to do is just group it uh, group by that particular field so we just group by and we want to call it month okay so what that does is creates us the table that we need to feed into the batch okay so now we need to create this batch file so if we take it from we take it from here and we take all of this copy it and then we open a new screen and paste it in there oh, put that. we don't need that um, so we can create now an input into here which is from here so first of all we need the input so where's my lost my interface tools interface there we are so we got some interface tools so we need a macro input um, and the text we're expecting i was in the other is in here so uh, is from is like this this is the text we are expecting to be coming in so let's just stick a browse on here Being a bit messy now we'll run that we can then um, we can then copy that copy with headers go to the other one and in here edit the data and click on that and paste okay now we want to and then we need to create an output a macro output the other end oh, output the other end and then um, we want uh, an action on this one because this is what's going to drive our macro and then we want the control parameter okay so I think that will do it so if we file save as um, we'll call it uh, challenge 17 and save that okay so in here we now just need to get rid of this we don't need any more we can then insert this macro challenge 17 which has now appeared you can see there it is okay um and then uh and then we bring it in is that right bring that in there um, okay we're going to map it to a field so we want to map it to uh, group by record id because that's the one we want to group it um, uh, a month um, and then the questions i think we're Let's see what we do whether we need them or not I'm not entirely sure um, and then we want an output so let's uh, create a browse at the end doesn't like it still hold on we need to so allowing me to oh here we go so choose a field month so we must have 
an issue here. Okay, let's go back and let's delete this again and then go back to our original. Okay, so if we take in this, we bring that back in, paste. And um, what was the, we need that as well. well. Let's just work out if we can, what's going on here. So if we put that in there and that in there, and then run it, what happens then? Ah, right, so this is the result. We've got a null at the top. So we want to get rid of nulls. And we also want to, this is not, this is picking up more than we want in here. Get rid of the ones we've already done. Yeah, thinking, because the numbers here are including the ones already done. I don't know why we've got zeros in there. Oh, maybe we get rid of the. We only want the ones, don't we? Well, we can. What's going on here? We should never. We've got zeros in there. I think we need to get rid of the previous own ones that have run through. So, uh, the you know before the month that have already closed. So let's just do that. So pre. Oh, do we do that one in here? Come on. Previous closed. Um, and then if we do a then if uh, so if close is before or less than the month, then um, well we can just call it one else zero. We'll make another integer. Okay, and then what we can do is get rid of it. A filter and basically say previous month um, does not equal one okay let's run that and see what we get okay but we've still got this zero here i think we just get rid of the nulls from month so here we just do start of month is not null run that here we go so we now have the same format as in here now what we don't have it is as a batched batch macro so i'm wondering because these are it was expect but oh, we only need the month that's the thing we only need the month in here so let's just uh select in there um oh we only have the month but it's a date and if we make it a string no, it needs to be a date. This is a that format, and that's so if it matches. So we just want to pen that month on. I'm a bit confused by that. Okay, so let's um, let's take this and we'll put it in our other. Um, let's put it down. Let's just put it here and get rid of this. Right, and then see if we can work this out. So again, we want the interface tools, and we want to put in. Um, oh, it was that um, this this one from here because that's the expected paste. I need to make it so big. Um, and then off that we want the action because it's the month and then we want the trial parameter and then we want the macro in on this side i think and then we wanted that data again um or something like that one might, might be wrong um and then we want an output okay and then if we save this now let's see if we can bring that in into macro. Right, so if we bring that there and we want it from that goes into that one, that goes into that one, and then if we put a browse on the end, what do we get? 
Okay, it needs configuring. So, okay, well, I've worked out what I was doing wrong. Um, basically, I had these the wrong way around. <laughs> inputs the wrong way around. So, um, if I bring this text in here, um, and then we click off it, um, I did have an error just then saying it's string. Uh, oh no, I've got another error. It must be fat, mapped to a field. Uh, so if I do month there, and then here month again, that should work. And it gives us, if I run it through off this test one, we've now got the answers we want. So if we just, I've tried tried pulling it in from here, and it will work on this workflow going all the way through, but it doesn't work with the macro, and I don't really understand why. But uh, we'll do it the hard way, rather than making it a bit more dynamic. Um, so 2013, 08, 01. Okay, so that should give us our four months. Run that, and bingo, we have our solution, which looks exactly like this one. Bingo. So if we just, if I just open, this is the challenge. This is the macro that we've created. So it's just a copy of the other one with these. Uh, configurations and the way as I said in here when you click on it you just click on the month in here I just happen to get so get these the wrong way around and then um, month again here because it's already got the other fields that are in here we called I open close these and it's the month you try to pull in this way so there you go job done thanks very much and see you again next time